Maria Mandel, the Beast of Auschwitz-Birkenau. Between the years 1933 and 1945, Nazi Germany established more than 44,000 camps. They used these locations for a range of purposes, including forced labor, the detention of people that were deemed to be enemies of the state, and mass murder. One of these sites was the Ravensbrück Camp for Women. The Ravensbrück concentration camp was the largest concentration camp for women during the Nazi party's reign. Ravensbrück was second in size only to the women's camp at Auschwitz-Birkenau, and so was massive. After the closure of the Lichtenberg camp in 1939, Ravensbrück was also the only main concentration camp that was designated almost exclusively for women. The Nazis spared neither women nor children when it came to conducting mass murder operations. The Nazis had a policy that they named the Final Solution, and it was under this policy that they executed these actions. Maria Mandel was one of many who carried out these orders, as well as other horrific acts, largely in the Ravensbrück concentration camp. Born on the 10th of January in 1912, Maria Mandel grew up in Upper Austria and was the daughter of a shoemaker. When Austria was eventually annexed into Nazi Germany in the year 1938, for whatever reason, she decided to move to Munich. That same year, she was amongst the first group of women to volunteer to work as staff in Nazi concentration camps through the League of German Girls program. Mandel began her career as an Aufseherin, or female guard at Lichtenberg, one of the earliest camps and the first to be used exclusively for female prisoners. She officially went and joined the Nazi party in the year 1941 and was quickly promoted to Oberaufseherin, also known as Chief Guard. This was due to her showing an early enthusiasm for the work and revealing a penchant for bloodlust early on. Her brutality is what initially set her apart from other female workers. Unfortunately, Mandel's habit of using physical violence to keep prisoners in line left a huge impact on her victims. Known for being one of the most ruthless guards throughout the Holocaust, Maria Mandel's violent tendencies earned her the nickname The Beast. As she grew increasingly comfortable within her role as a guard, Mandel's willingness to resort to violence and a quick temper helped her climb the ranks in multiple Nazi concentration camps. Eventually, she would pay for the crimes she committed against thousands of prisoners under her control. Those who survived the ordeal are still haunted by the memory of Maria, the Beast Mandel, and her brutality, among many of the other horrors they witnessed. In the 2017 book Irma Gresser, The Beast of Belsen, and other twisted female guards of concentration camps, a Holocaust survivor named Lena Haag spoke about how inmates would be beaten for the slightest infractions and mistakes. They were subjected to many indignities, such as being stripped naked and tied to wooden posts, where Maria Mandel would then beat us mercilessly until she could no longer lift her arm. Another prisoner recounted in their book, Ravensbrück, Life and Death in Hitler's Concentration Camp for Women, about how Mandel and her fellow infamous guard, Dorothea Binz, preferred to beat people themselves rather than have someone else do it. Mandel would go out of her way to find reasons to brutally beat inmates, often with no provocation. One of her favorite things to do was to look for women who had curled their hair, which was against the camp's rules. If she found a single curly hair on a prisoner's head, she would kick her to the ground and beat them repeatedly over their head. There were moments when she would even shave their heads and force them to go around in the camp wearing a sign around their necks that read, I broke the rules and curled my hair, in order to humiliate them. Another Holocaust survivor, Maria Bielica, reported that she once witnessed Mandel kick a fellow inmate to death for doing something wrong, without ever specifying what she had done to deserve something so heinous. Yet another survivor recalled how Mandel once selected a child whom she dressed up in fine clothing, parading it around like a puppet. The child was constantly by her side, holding her hand and keeping her company, until she grew bored of it and threw the child into the gas chamber. In The Beast of Belsen, several survivors recount how sometimes she would pick prisoners as pets and have them work for her personally and constantly, only to send them to be murdered as soon as she was tired of them. Another inmate gave a detailed account of Mandel's actions. In one of the blocks, around 700 women were chosen out of 1,000. Mandel selected these unfortunate women, and all of them were forced to strip and crammed into one block, where they were forced to remain for seven days and nights without food or water. On the night of the 27th of September, they were transported to the crematorium and never returned. Throughout those seven days, horrible screams and groans were heard issuing from that block. When the women were taken to the crematorium, the block elder, a Slovakian woman named Sila, told the other prisoners that after those seven days, there would be more corpses than living people in that block, and that almost all of them had bitten fingers and breasts and plucked out eyes, as well as being mutilated in other ways. 
Throughout those seven days, if any prisoner wanted to carry water or some food to that block, she was immediately arrested on the spot and taken to perish along with the rest. Despite possessing an insatiable bloodlust, Mandel was also described as having been highly intelligent and very sophisticated. She enjoyed both literature and fine food, but she was perhaps most famously known for her taste in music, which was reported by many to have been exquisite. Oddly, shortly after one prisoner watched her mercilessly kill another prisoner during roll call, another one of their fellow prisoners reported hearing the most beautiful music while they were being forced to clean the guards' quarters. A senior guard at Ravensbrook was able to bring a piano into the camp for their entertainment, and the unnamed prisoner witnessed Mandel playing it, lost in a world of her own, in ecstasy. Allegedly, it was while she was at the concentration camp that she indulged her love of classical music and sought to set up the women's orchestra at Auschwitz. The orchestra was formed of inmate musicians who were often spared from the gas chamber. The orchestra would be made to perform in all weather conditions and for hours. They even performed during roll calls, selections, transports and executions. Notorious Nazis, such as Heinrich Himmler, were alleged to have been great admirers of Mandel's orchestra and even the sadistic Dr. Joseph Mengele was reportedly brought to tears by some of their music. Maria Mandel's reign of terror finally came to an end as the Allies advanced into Germany and the Nazis began to lose the war. In 1945, she and many others were captured by the American forces after attempting to flee to Bavaria in order to escape their crimes. The United States Army arrested Mandel on the 10th of August in 1945. Subsequent interrogations reportedly revealed her to be highly intelligent and supremely dedicated to her work in the camps. She was handed over to the Republic of Poland in November 1946, and by November 1947 she was tried in a Krakow courtroom in what would become known as the Auschwitz trial and sentenced to death. A Polish survivor of Auschwitz named Stanislava Rachvalova was imprisoned in the cell next to Maria Mandel and Teresa Brandl. She stated that the last time she and the two German war criminals met, after they'd been sentenced to death and several days before their execution took place, both asked her for forgiveness. The Supreme National Tribunal, presiding in Krakow, eventually issued 23 death sentences and 17 imprisonments, ranging from life sentences to three-year sentences. All executions were carried out on January 28, 1948, at the Krakow prison, which was described as one of the most terrible Nazi prisons in occupied Poland, and had been used by Gestapo throughout World War II. Maria Mandel and Teresa Brandl were the first to be executed. Only one person was acquitted, Sergeant Major Hans Munch. He refused to participate in the selection process when it came to choosing people to be killed, and attempted to make several, ultimately futile, requests for more food to be brought to the inmates. Mandel was declared a war criminal for her role in the torture and murder of countless prisoners. She was executed at the age of 36 by hanging on January the 24th, 1948. She is gone, but her cruel deeds will never be forgotten. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like and subscribe button so you can enjoy more walks through history.